Hi, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living the Wholesome Life. And, and we are on week 21, day 3 of our positive, peaceful affirmations that we are doing every day, Monday through Friday. We are following Dr. Susan Lawton's book, Positive, Peaceful Growth Calendar. I highly recommend buying it if you love um, positive affirmations, if you love music therapy and you love aromatherapy and essential oils, you are going to love the combinations in this book. You can buy it at Aroma Tools or Oil Life and probably many other places too. The affirmation for this week is, I am drawing to me resources to complement my goals. Now, I can't believe I have talked about this twice and I haven't mentioned the number one best way to draw resources to you. And that is through prayer, right? Um, Christ promised um, when he was on the earth that if we, if we seek, we will find. If we um, ask, we will be given. And if we knock, it will be opened. And I, I don't know if I said that in the exact right order that um, it's recorded in the scriptures, but it's basically all the same thing, like, right, repeating the same thing to us. Ask, seek, find, ask, be given, knock, it will be open to you. He repeated it three times, just trying to um, nourish that thought in our minds that God loves us and um he wants to help us. We are his children. We are not his physical child like Christ was, but we are his spiritual children. And um, anyway, so as you're trying to draw resources to you, the number one way to do that is prayer. Um, and anyway, that's, that's my best thought on that one. Um, the affirmation for this week, I mean today, is I am open to using the resources as they arrive. Have you ever had something that you were so excited to get, but you didn't use? I remember when I first got my essential oils. I they were like so um, I was so excited about them, and they were so um, I knew that they were so good with so many things. I'm like, oh no, I don't want to use this because I I need it just in case of an emergency, right? And um. And then I realized a little bit later, as a lot of my friends were using their essential oils, and they were they were getting story, amazing story after amazing story on on how they were changing their lives in significant ways. And I'm like, I don't I don't have those stories yet because my oils they're still in the bottle, right? And so if you have essential oils, get them out of the bottle start using them. If we aren't using our essential oils on a daily basis, regular basis, whatever you want to say, then how are we going to know how to use them when the time really comes? We won't. We won't have the experience to be able to trust in them. So, um, that's, and that's just an example of essential oils. Do you have something else that you never ever use? Like maybe it's your mom's china. Like, um, do you have wonderful things that you just never use? Why? I mean, treat things with care, but let's let's bring them out. I know that I inherited my mom's china when she died last year, and um, I love to bring it out on special occasions, special holidays. We bring it up at at Thanksgiving and Christmas time. I'm gonna bring it out for Valentine's Day, and I just think that makes it makes her more part of the celebrations. Um, so whatever resource it is that you have that you aren't using, maybe you have bought a gym membership and you you don't go, like, I don't know, maybe um, use it. I don't know anything about gym memberships. I like exercising out just like in, in the neighborhood with my friends, going on walks, but maybe if you're not using it, like transfer that. And, um, okay, so using the other resources that we have. Um, one of the, as I was going through, thinking about the different resources that we have 
that we can all use. The first one I thought of was our mornings. Like, do you feel like you don't have enough time to get things done? Um, do you feel like your mornings are really hectically or hectic and rushed? Well, let's maybe let's maybe use some time that we have that maybe we're not using. Maybe let's start waking up an hour earlier. Let's let's use that time for writing the book that we always wanted to write, or for exercising and um, getting our body into the shape that we want to get it in. Let's use that time for just meditation and prayer and scripture study and, and connecting with God. Like our mornings are incredible times. If you have young children at home, um, you know, probably that when um, when the children are up, you are on. You are on as the mom or the dad or whatever. But before you're up, they're up. Your your time is your own. Um, having had nine children and only having four at home right now, I definitely wake up early. That's my peaceful, tranquil time where I am doing the projects that I want. So our mornings are a um, incredible resource to us. If you haven't ever been a morning riser, but you want a little bit more time in your day, what maybe what you can do is start setting your clock maybe 15 minutes ahead of time until you kind of get used to it. You baby step into becoming an early morning raiser. And as you are baby stepping, coming into becoming an early morning raiser, maybe you can um, baby step away from staying up so late, right? Let's, let's transition. Um, what I've noticed, and you tell me what you notice in your life, but I notice that in mornings, people tend to be very, very productive. And at night, most people tend to um, drift into the relax and kind of pleasure time. So, um, which do you think? What, what part of that time do you think you you need more in your day? You know, use that time for you the way you need it. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about, well, just I just brainstormed a list of resources that we might we might all have. Um, um, obviously, we all have the ability to plan and calendar. So let's use that resource. If we haven't been good, if we um, at um, planning or calendaring in the past, this is a new this is a new month, right? We're in February now, and we can start looking at the calendar more and putting things more on the calendar. So we um, and planning our lives more. So we're living our lives more intentionally, being able to draw those resources in and use them better as we calendar and plan. Okay, um, thinking of things that I might need as a mom, um, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, so as a mom, oh, don't we want all the resources that we can to help us raise our children in good ways? And there's a lot of resources that are out there. Um, if you're a member of your church, definitely reach out and you and you need some help with your um, children. And well, definitely, use, first of all, use the resources they have, use the primary or Sunday school or youth groups that they have, right? Um, that would be wonderful. Um, but definitely reach out to your pastor. Hey, pastor, this stuff is going on. I, I just need some wisdom. Can you share? Um, and maybe if they have their youth leaders or, you know, Sunday school teachers, right? Um, whatever you call it in your church, definitely reach out to them and say, hey, uh, can we have a lesson on whatever issue it is that you're dealing with? Maybe you're dealing with honesty and so that you want to say, hey, can, we're really dealing with honesty right now in our house. Um, and so, and trying to increase our honesty. Can you can you help us with some lessons on honesty? Or maybe you're trying to, um, I don't know, whatever it is that you're dealing with, use the people in your church to help. Right, and, and that means reaching out for you too. Like if you're struggling with something, reach for your church members. They are there for you, right? We're all we're all community, um, all Christ-based communities trying to love on each other and help us all get back to God. Okay, so definitely use your church. Um, I was thinking, okay, so maybe your children need educational help. You know what, there's tutors everywhere. There's retired people who want to make a little bit more money. Um, maybe, or maybe they don't even, maybe they don't even care about the money, but they just, they're, they love the feeling of still helping other people, you know, reach out to them. Um, and as I'm talking about reaching out to people, 
I also wanted to mention, like use the resources that you have. So let's say that you have a, um, a lot of time, but hardly any money, right? Um, definitely, and let, definitely, um, that gives you more time to create different programs, to look into different programs, to get connected into different things, right? And if you have a lot of money, well, then that gives you a lot of money to to help make your dreams come true. So um, whether you have time that you can spend or whether you have money. Um, anyway, just wanted to say that one. So if you have money, okay, so I was listening to a broadcast and they were talking about time and money. And they were saying, you know what, if you have a lot of money and you don't have a lot of time, why don't you, why don't you spend some of your money to, to release some of your responsibilities to others, to invest other people to help with you, right? And of course, you're always in control of that responsibility, but to get other people to help with you um, so that you can spend your time doing what you feel is most important. And they were saying, you know, maybe you thought you'd be a person who was never, would never use a dog, dog walker, but you just don't have time for that. You need your time used on the better things. So um, there's, they're like, don't feel guilty. And I'm like, absolutely don't feel guilty. If you need to invest in people helping you and you have the money to pay for it, don't feel guilty about that. Why? Because you are blessing that person with the resource of money to help them in their lives, right? So if you have time and you don't, Reverse that. If you have money and you don't have a lot of time and you're not being able to spend the time what you feel is most valuable, use some of your money to to get help with your other responsibilities that so you can't spend time on what you feel is the most valuable. And that's an investment. It's not it's not a waste. It's an investment. Okay. So um talking I just okay as we're talking about using the resources we had I was watching a thing on gardening and they were seeing that you can garden anywhere right you can garden on your window sills or on your kitchen window sills anyway I think I kind of repeated myself there but you can garden in small things you can do square foot garden where you're you're gardening vertically instead of horizontally there's community gardens that we can hook up to so what I'm seeing is I'm giving you these as I'm giving you these different ideas is that if you feel like you have a need and you lack the resource I feel like this world is abundant and I think that God wants us to bless us with our need so let's get a little creative on how what can we do to reach out and help bring those resources to us and what can we do to better use our resources okay so um maybe and so maybe you've been abundantly blessed with a lot of resources right and there are some that you find that you're not using right to me a good use of those resources is then looking around who could use this resource let's give it to them right i don't know why but it seemed like we had boxes and boxes of diapers in our house when our littlest one was finally potty trained what did i do i looked around i'm like who has a lot of children and a need for diapers right and gifted them to that family because so whether whether you have more clothes than you can really use gift them to your local thrift store if you have more um I don't know more whatever more tools like maybe you've you've in the past you've used a lot of tools and now you really don't use them anymore give them to someone else who can use them right whatever it is that you whatever it is you have that you're really not putting to good use let's give them and out to the universe my best guess is that are gifting the things that we no longer use out to people who can't we in turn will be blessed with what we really need and with what we really can use they're saying that you can't and this is one this was by um, one of our um apostles in a general conference talk and it's everywhere right it's not just our faith but it's says you cannot give god a crust without him returning a whole loaf to you right and as we as we give things to people people around us as we give things to god's children he will give us what we need back i am a hundred percent um a hundred percent um convinced of that okay 
So, um, looking at other things, maybe, okay, so y'all know about Alcoholics Anonymous. Like, everyone knows about that, and they, they, they probably have, I don't know, they think they have a lot of splinter groups. Maybe they have Anger Anonymous, and they even have, like, the um, groups with the family members that, I don't even know what it's called. Is it called Al-Anon? I don't even know. Anyway, so but they have for alcoholics and they have groups for family members of alcoholics and they have groups of, I think, with anger, maybe even drugs, maybe they're different addictions. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I just want to let you know that I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and we have programs like that too that are free, just like Al the Alcoholics Anonymous. And programs for just general addiction, like um, drugs or alcohol, smoking, um, you know, those general, maybe anger, general addictions that you want to give up, right? And they have those programs for people who are um, suffering with those addictions and then family members who are suffering too, um, who have members that are the ones that are the addicts, right? Because if you are an addict, addict you are suffering and if you're a family member of an addict you also are dealing with some very very heavy things okay so not only do they have um programs for general addiction that are free right but they also have programs from for like sexual addiction for like pornography or infidelity or whatever to help both the addict whatever and the um family member too right so um even if you're not a member of our church you can definitely come and and um use those resources and so um you know what reach out look at look at what the churches in your in your um neighborhood in your community offer like my, one might have something they absolutely love one of my best friends she was a member of a bell choir of another church because she that's what she was into at the time right she wanted to play bells and so she went and joined the bell choir of another church churches i don't know a church I've, I've i've been to very many churches right we love exploring new churches it's so neat to see how different people worship and um i don't know a church that has not welcomed us into their community when we have gone oh, we went to um a jewish I think you call them synagogues. I don't know. Anyway, I think so. But we went in there. They were so welcoming. Like people of ch different churches are so welcoming, and and um, I feel like they love it when when you join their groups and 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 anyway. So just letting you know some other resources that might be out there. I will put the link in our com in my comments about. Um, our church's addiction recovery program for you. Um, another thing, internet, right? Wow, what an amazing resource that we have. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, the things that you can learn on the internet, amazing, you can you can learn how to, like, they have so many exercise programs on the internet. Um, you can learn how to parent better. You can learn how to knit. Like what? Like karma repair. My husband's always. How do I do that? Right, and and then and then doing it. Right. So, um, people use it for home repairs, home modeling. How do I do that? Right. So there are so many good things too on the internet to use as a resource. Um, definitely. Um, the biggest challenge with that is just making sure that we're not drawn into the black hole of um internet surfing, as opposed to really using the internet as a tool to get closer to where we want in our goals. So that was just a, yeah, try not to get drawn into the black hole. Okay, um, just wanted to say, um, give a shout out for libraries. Oh my gracious, they have so many books. If they don't have a book, you can, you can, I've never found a book that I could not enter library alone. Um, I don't think so. Um, enter library loan for a book costs a dollar, right? So basically, you know, you can read any book you want for a dollar if your library system doesn't have it. And here is a tip for you. If you want a book and you don't want to interlibrary loan it and your library doesn't have it, well, a good tip is to have you and five friends or more go and request the book from your library. Your library has funds to buy books. And as, as they have people requesting books, they buy them. Okay. Um, maybe not everyone, 
they don't have unlimited budget, but they do buy a lot. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about um, with the, with libraries is um, they have story times, they have play times. Uh, who knew this? Our library has a a play time every single week on Friday where they just open it up for I think an hour, maybe two, maybe two hours. Anyway, they just open it up and they have toys all over in the auditorium. Just, in the auditorium, just super cool toys, and people go and they bring their little toddlers, right? Xander's loving it, and they get to play and they get to meet other moms and socialize. Super cool. Check out your library. Maybe it has something. If that's something, that's a resource that you feel like you need in your life. Um, last thing that I wanted to um talk about is maybe unemployment or underemployment. Maybe you are unemployed or underemployed, and um. Use the employment agencies that are out there. Our church has um, LDS employment agencies. They definitely have people that sit there all day and they're like, we want to help you get a better job. So look up LDS employment agency. You don't have to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints to go and they are phenomenal about helping you re um, write your resumes and practice interviewing tips and, um, and Get a better job so um use what you have i'm sure okay and then two other things um definitely there are so what, what's your goal like right we're trying to use our resources to get us better closer to our goals right so what is your goal maybe your goal is to be a better mom well there's conferences out there on even online that you can you can listen to and and learn from maybe your goal is to write a book or you know become a i don't know whatever your goal is there's conferences that are connected with your goal, check them out. And definitely use a mentor, like I am, use an accountability partner, you know, whether it's your mom, your best friend, maybe it's um, someone just, you know, a, you know, a, a, like a colleague or a coworker or um, just someone that you, you know, even not super great, but you can just reach out to them and say, hey, you know what? I am really looking for someone who can be an accountability partner. Do you mind if I just text you at 10 o'clock in the morning and at 10 o'clock in the evening to tell you my goals and then to tell you whether I did them? And um, anyway, I think accountability partners are great. Whatever other resources are that you need in your life, um, definitely use them when they come in. Don't don't let them go to waste, right? Okay, so... Um, the, app, the um, song that we're talking about on using the resources that we have in our lives. Well, the, the song that Dr. Susan Lawton paired for the whole entire week is Colors of the Wind. Um, I, I take super a lot of time to connect on what song I would choose for this exact affirmation, but but think that I'm kind of, um, the song that I'm really like, connecting with kind of on the topic is that song, Let the Sun Shine In. Um, I'll put it onto the comments, but it's like, let the sun shine in, treat it with the grin. So, anyway, so basically the resources are there. Let them in and let's do it. That's the song I'm connecting with. I'll put it in the comments. Um, okay, so the... The diffuser blend that we're using this week is two drops of ginger, which is oil and peppermint, two drops of helixum, which is oil for pain, and two drops of coriander, which is the oil of integrity. So today we are talking about helixum. It is actually a beautiful yellow flower, kind of like, um, I think it comes from Daisy family. And um, the flower is sometimes called a mortel. So, it is very, very good for emotional healing. Well, first of all, its nickname is the oil for pain, right? And we know, we know that whatever you can use physically, you can also use it emotionally, right? It's it's like it gives us the clue on how to use things both ways. Um, a clue on that one, well, an example of that is lavender. It's super good for calming you down and helping you go to sleep, um, but it's also good for calming or calming anxiety, but it's also good for calming your immune system. Like if you have an allergic reaction or you have allergies, lavender is a super great thing. It calms your body and your emotions down, right? So, um, anyway, 
we know that helichrysum is great for pain. It's going to be great for emotional pain too. It helps us get in touch with unresolved emotions and it can gently restore our memories so that we can work through them, right? If we have something, some pain from the past that we are suppressing, why are we suppressing it? Why are we holding that in? Why are we not looking at it, dealing with it, and letting it go? Doesn't that sound better? Like, like getting it out of our system instead of holding it in and suppressing it? Now, I know that there's a lot of things that can be super painful. I'm not telling us that we have to attack every painful thing right now, but just as they come up, we can, we can, we can acknowledge them. We can, we can, um, acknowledge, okay. As they come up, we can acknowledge them. We can, we can focus on them for a while. We can, we can dig deep and see what was really going on. Like, I know that happened back then when I had this perspective, but I'm a different person now. Is there a different perspective I can take on what happened? And then let's work through it and let's release it, okay? Um, anyway, and as helichrysum can help with that. It's great for people who have a long history, history of suffering and hardship or abuse, okay? People that have been traumatized over and over and over again. It can help us let go of pain, which can in, in turn help us open up to other people um, and be more trusting and form better relationships. It can help us release defensive mechanisms. I am defeating it right now. I'm diffusing the diffuser blend right now. I think it'd be a wonderful game changer in my home. Don't we all carry some things of emotional pain? Like in our family, a lot of times, not every time because sometimes we forget, but a lot of times at the end of the day, we like to go around the circle before or after prayer and say what our rose and our thorn was, right? So because I, especially because I have so many boys and our society teaches boys so much to to hold in their the negative things that happen to them and not talk it out, not reach out. So, um, so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll go around the circle and we'll say uh, our rose, right, the good thing that happened to us that day, and then our thorn, the the thing that wasn't so happy that day. And yesterday we didn't do that, but yesterday what I did is I'm like just just raise your hand if your day went perfectly exactly the way you wanted it, right? That that nothing that day went wrong in your day. And like no one raised their hands, right? I don't know that anyone in any group will ever raise their hand that everything went perfectly the way they had envisioned in the morning, right? So that means that we all have some sense of hurts, whether big or small, that are kind of hitting us on a, on a daily basis. And it's good to, to um, reflect, to, um, to look at them. How else can I be looking at these things that happened? Like, I know I'm looking at it this way, but is, is there another way I could be looking at this situation? And sometimes we need to connect with God. God, is there another way? What do I need to learn from this situation? And then working it through and then letting it go, right? Not carrying all the burden on us. I, I, it's almost like I feel like we're getting like mud flicked on us or um, thorns in our shoes, right? And, and it's time to like take out those thorns from our shoes and wash off the mud and work through the issues and release them. To me, that's the biggest gift of Healy Christmas essential oil. Okay, um, it's a comforting oil. You know how you have comfort foods? What's your, what's your favorite comfort food? I actually love a recipe that's called funeral potatoes. They often um, serve them at funerals here in Utah, but it's just like your, your potato um, kind of onion, and and soupy type whatever casserole right 
and um, mashed potatoes are comfort foods. Um, macaroni and cheese are comfort foods some, for some people. Um, I don't know, maybe peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or whatever you used to eat as a child is your comfort food. I don't know. But you know that you definitely have foods that comfort you, right? And they, they tend to be comforting to a large majority of people, okay? There are essential oils like that too. There are essential oils that when you smell them, some essential oils are energizing, some es essential oils are relaxing, and some essential oils are comforting. And healing chrism is a powerful oil for comforting people, okay? So let's another gift of um, helichrysum essential oil. Let's try to lock that in my memory and mind. Okay, um, helichrysum, because it's comforting, it can help us see the good things that are happening. Right, so sometimes um, I I make my children do their schoolwork. Mm -hmm. That's me. I make them do their chores even when they don't want to. I do. That's me. And sometimes my children don't see that as an incredible gift. Do your children always see that as an incredible gift? Mine don't. But it, at the end of the day, so many times I have my children come up and they give me a hug and they're like, Mom, I see it. Thank you. Right? There's things like that that happen to us too and we're like, why are you being so mean? Life, life, why are you being so mean to me? Right? And then we see it with, a, we, we start seeing things with different eyes and we realize that life actually gave us a gift. It wasn't being mean to us. Life wasn't being mean to us. It gave us a gift. And, and I really do think that, that God can use anything that happens to us to our good. He can change whatever happens to us to our good. So helichrysum is an essential oil that can help us open our eyes to see the good things that happen of what has happened to us and the good things that are happening around us, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of bad news, right? The news is full of bad news for the most part, right? Um, so we need things to put things intentionally into our life that remind us of the good. And Helichrism is great for that. Um, we've already talked about how it's so good for trauma. It'd be great to use on a baby after birth to help just like release all of that. It's also a great oil to use as people, maybe in hospice, as people are kind of going out and going to back to heaven, right? Um, making that transition easier, easier. Um, helping us release the trauma of this life and and knowing that God loves us and we're, we're about to go home. Okay, so. Um, here's some things that it can mix with. It mixes great with wintergreen if you want to help to change your attitude. It makes mixes wonderfully with cilantro if you are trying to use it as an emotional cleanser. It makes mix, mixes very good with Douglas or fur or Siberian fur if you're trying to kind of work through and release some of your generational issues. And um, it mixes good with bergamot or ginger or lemongrass if you're trying to bring back some of your personal power and a lot of times if we've had emotionally painful issues um we aren't feeling the most um in control the most personal powerful that, that we can create the life that we want and so um mixing it with those oils can help us remind remind ourselves that we are powerful people that can change our life for the better. Okay, so that's um, almost all that I wanted to say about Healy Chrism. I just wanted to let you know that the negative emotions that it can um, address are intense emotional pain, anguish or trauma, feeling hopeless, feeling like we're despairing, and being wounded. And the positive properties that it can bring in is feeling healed, feeling courageous, feeling hopeful, feeling transformed from from what we've gone through, in, not into something broken, but into something better. And um, having the wherewithal to persevere through the hard things that go on, and we all have them almost every day. Like we, we need that well of persevering energy. 
and um, feeling determined. Okay, so that is Healy Chrism. Um, a little bit more about the emotional gifts of Healy Chrism. Just reminding you that this week we are diffusing two drops of ginger, which is the oil of empowerment, two drops of Healy Chrism, which is the oil for both emotional and physical pain, and two drops of coriander, which is the oil of integrity. I, my song for the day is let the sunshine in, like let the, those resources just flow into us and let's use them. And um, the affirmation for today is I'm open to using the resources as they're right. And the affirmation for the week is I am drawing to new resources to complement goals. Okay. This is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, and Living the Wholesome Life. And telling us all that we are incredibly powerful, smart, loving, incredible people, and we can make it a great day. Goodbye.